Hello, and today on this weekend summer day, which probably doesn't really get the best of the encouragements to listen to the webinars, we are going to cover the subject of bruxism. So this question about the teeth grinding, and there are all kinds of other expressions, grinding, gnashing, and whatever else, you know, clenching, and all sorts of things. So that's the question that actually comes up quite often. And it's worth addressing because, you know, it kind of allows us to both do the, uh, say, practical perspective and, on the other hand, you know, like, gets the insight in how, you know, how the things work in general, right? So that we get the better insight into this. Uh, because, you know, we'll just use this example talking about the connection between the jaw and the head and the stability and so on and so on. But obviously speaking of it in the like local case of the jaw squashing, right? So then we can extend this conversation further towards the uh, other areas, right? So you see like, again, the, it's just to get the catch that the principles are more or less the same, right? So you see how the, uh, discharge occurs right and what actually the channel is doing and so on and so forth so that's the kind of reference so meaning we have the problem in itself which could be quite uh challenging and uh, for a lot of parents it's very uh, disturbing right so like on, when the child does all this braxing of their teeth uh, in the night and this it's the sound and the whole kind of also concern about the dis destroying the actual teeth and uh, on top of it of course that's this extra lesson about how it could be transferred to the understanding of the other areas so which would be remote right so the same principles but somewhere else i know the elbow the hip the food, so the principles are more or less the same. Screen sharing. So what do we have? Actually, as always, as always, we start with the help of Google and with the dictionary definition, right? So let's click in there and see what they say. So bruxism, teeth grinding, that's from Maya clinic so and you see here they even tell you how you should pronounce it brook season right is a condition in which you grind gnash or clench your teeth if you have bruxism you may unconsciously clench your teeth when you are awake that's the awake bruxism or clench or grind them during the sleep that's a sleep bruxism. so now sleep bruxism is considered a sleep related movement disorder and those people are actually quite likely to have other sleep disorders, such as snoring and sleep apnea. And mild bruxism might not require treatment. That's an interesting perspective, right? And then, because you have me sleep bruxism and be unaware of until complications develop, it's important to know the signs. Well, of course, that kind of addresses the people who live solo, right, the adults, and just don't know what they do when they are when they are asleep. But in our scenario, we have very clear situation that the parents obviously know very well what's happening to the child at night. So, but the interesting things, actually, which start popping up when we look at the explanations, what you see here is that there are no really good or clear technical explanations. I'm gonna say that I was surprised myself because I always considered it as a, such a common and really like technical issue where you have to look at the way how the the joy is suspended what is the you know what is what are the stabilities of the neck you know how the person discharges and so on. it's like being really technical thing 
but if you look at what are the explanations that you are getting, first of all, right, it's like the very question, the very point itself, that mild bruxism may not require treatment, that already kind of rings certain bells, right? So you see, okay, if there is something mild, and if you really have some kind of, you know, productive therapy form, if anything, you should probably address it, right? When it's mild, rather than waiting until it gets wild or severe, right? So that's already an indication. But then once we start looking here, the alarm the, becomes even louder, right? So the conversation moves into stress. So stress is defined as a physical, chemical, or emotional factor that causes bodily or mental tension. Lifestyle habits, alcohol, tobacco use, recreational drugs, caffeine, and so on. It's like, okay, how specific, how specific are those messages? You know, because when we talk about stress, right? So you see, what do we need to uh, know about the, 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 what would be the technical manifestation of stress? Right, the technical manifestation of stress would be this, that we have the certain level of normal background muscle tone, right? So in a more extended state, the base level myofascial tone, which is compatible with the kind of full, let's put it into the proper way, full charge and discharge, right? So you see, as the muscles you know, undergoing through a certain activity, they get their contractions, you know, which are then followed by the, by the full discharge and then getting the activity again. So that range of the charge and discharge is working well. So without any kind of residue. So that would be the case of the normal tone, right? Of the kind of what also being uh, labeled as human, resting muscle tone, right? If we take the definition, which is relatively well known in, uh, let's say, fascia circles. So, and what happens with the stress factor? So the stress factor by, if we kind of translate the words of bodily or mental tension, into again into technical terms that means that this background resting tone goes up right so you see then we can call it the human you know whatever stressed resting muscle tone so like the background tone goes up and once we see this definition, that's actually, once we make this simple technical definition, that's already enough for us to start understanding what's happening. Because if we add this additional bump, additional factor here, what does it mean? That means that we are starting to face the situation where that wave of charge and discharge, you know, is actually starting to have some residual level so if we do the usual graph of kind of loading and then the unloading right which supposed to bring it back to the initial state that would be kind of the normal scenario what would be the bruxism or, or what would be the stress effects on the total state the stress effect would obviously be this, that you got a certain different wave of how the charge is happening. But then on top of this, you get some trouble with the incomplete discharge. So that's the deficit of the discharge, which could be seen there and which then requires a certain constant you know, activity when the, you get stuck in this kind of charged or overly charged excess tension state, which you try to dissipate, discharge, bring it back to the resting muscle tone state. So that's a basic idea, right? So, but again, 
what disturbs what disturbs you into in this definition because you know when somebody talks about a very tangible right so bruxism it's very tangible uh, in terms of like more movement related thing and it's also local right it's not global thing of the entire body so tangible physical and local and then for this explanation what you get you get a very broad and non kind of technical non-mechanical explanation so this is caused by stress but you know let's look at the list of you know reverse the question and see how many other conditions could be aggravated by a stress like you'll find hundreds of entries right so you know and if you start getting this explanation which is not technical well how do you know you know what about it so you start reducing the level of stress is it enough or is it not what would be your kind of tracking of this level of stress reduction specifically related to bruxism right so you see what would be you know because if you that means that you have to start getting a certain map you know if you have a certain muscle tone and the charge discharge processes right so you see then you have to if you were doing it in a proper way you have to say okay we have the list of this 630 muscles right these muscles they can get they have the base level muscle tone they can get the charge and discharge so let's see what kind of profile we get as a result and then you know why some of them get very easily charged but have a hard time discharging right so that would be the dynamic evaluation which doesn't really you know it take doesn't doesn't take much of the cleverness or intelligence to come even to this one right because you know like if you have a, to do with the dynamic process when you have charge and discharge well you know make a map and then within this map identify which areas actually deserve uh, the uh, you know the special treatment because they have some distortions in the way how the uh, you know their time related dynamics how they are working or uh, so that loading and the uh, unloading curves so that they don't match each other right so you see they don't match the prof the, the profile so that's kind of already a very first line of thoughts and of course if i were the person who just opened the internet and started started to study and say mm, i mean i have a problem of bruxism let's see what uh, the big medical world uh, has for me well if i were in that situation i would get worried right away you know so mild bruxism we don't even care about it while the forms of course co what causes it stress lifestyle habits and alcohol gee you know you got a very specific thing which is happening in the you know specific mechanical thing happening in a very local area so the geography and nature of it is very tangible and then you are kind of bringing the explanation from uh, like a completely different domain and what does it mean you know if you have a problem in this domain which is mechanical and where you have the kind of very specific geography right so you see the location and then you drag the domain which is you know more related to the emotional and which is non-local right so you see which is non-geographic then if this is the only thing that you can offer well i would definitely get very very worried you know like you know you're saying i have a problem i don't know like with my door and the lock and then the answer would be okay so you have to 
put the if you have the problem with the door and the lock well we have to change the alarm and you know get a subscription from the security company i mean okay or even worse right so you see like maybe then you have to you are too worried you have to go to psychologists and get less worried you know okay the question is it's a good idea maybe to get the security company it's a good idea to sign for alarm it's a good idea to get to the to the psychologist but how is that related to my door and my lock i'd rather first start with some tangible things you know and tangible explanations okay maybe my door frame is not doing very well right or maybe whatever some parts of my lock are not doing very well right you know what is it is it the part which is active when you know or whether it's passive you know like i mean it's like tons of explanations there was a whole profession of fixing locks right but that has nothing to do with the uh, you know security alarms you know or putting the the video surveillance things i mean they are from about the same dimension but you know they're very very different and you know that's what i wanted to say that if you don't have a good explanation about what happens to the door and to the lock you know why the door gets jammed well if somebody tells you that in this case that you should sign up for the premium service of the local security company and get yourself three video cameras because the door you know is not functioning so and if it still locks you say well it's a mild lock problem so you can still keep going with it you know like you get concerned so that's my point which actually highlights that surprisingly there are no good definitions and no good explanations about bruxism so there are no clear mechanical lines which would be kind of giving us the idea okay so that happens then you know then so on and so on and, and like a certain causative thing but of course if there are no good explanations for the for that well you know it starts bringing the questions about the quality of the other explanations you know which you have for more convenient areas right like the arm or whatever the elbow the the, the knee and so on because the problem there with bruxism is that exercising the you know like exercising or mobilizing and doing something like this for the jury is not easy right you know you can easily visualize the idea of how to do the exercises for the arm but during the exercise for the jury you know you can of course think about it but it's not an easy thing to organize and it's not very well uh you know there are too many ways of how to do it wrong so and then we move further right and then look at this can bruxism be cured the answer here right away there is no cure maybe the treatment can reduce its frequency decrease its impact and relieve symptoms but it's in some tips can make it easier to cope with sleep so you know you your door doesn't close very well so let's put a guard dog behind it you know at least you would sleep better so and this bruxism serious well you know the condition can pose serious problem for the teeth and the joint may require treatment what medication helps bruxism and interestingly enough none right so you see again what is the line here they're trying to do the anti uh, anxiety right uh, kind of uh, disorders so the psycho put it simply right the psycho drugs they try to put it here into the kind of as a primary thing where the side effects would be the relief of uh, bruxism itself so you know again it doesn't take a genius to figure out that you know when we talk about the 
things like whatever this park seals zolofts and so on so those are the elements which have you know those are the the, the drugs that have kind of their effects of bringing down your muscle tone right so they are sort of the suppressor type of drugs so and in fact what we see is that okay if the global muscle tone is brought down then sometimes you get the side effect of getting the positive uh, change for the actual bruxism as such so again it raises the same question okay guys why do we you know that seems like an overshot right if the problem is local well how do we have some more local or regional impact from the same domain so how do we help with the regulation of the muscle tone in such a way that this charge and discharge actually happens properly without the accumulation of the residual things. so that's the very first set of observations and actually i must say that i was very surprised to read this because uh, you know like i thought that things were a little bit better but that sounds very very pessimistic if you kind of really look into it right and now we look at pictures and the conversations of uh bruxism causes in children not much there again if we look at the causes here that will be anxiety anger underlying disease and one of them would be the male occlusion right so you see that would be a very specific very specific uh description which comes from the dental dental uh profession but again if you have the male occlusion which is a, again a big structural thing so you see that's what we see we either facing the explanation which is non-structural at all like that would be the stress thing and anxiety anger and so on or we have the very structural like very narrow structural uh, explanation which is based on the alignment itself so because if you say that okay the problem is male occlusion you know the way how your jaw closes what happens then well then you have to go to the dentist and try to fix it throughout whatever the dentist is able to offer you right so you see and whether is what do they have there's going to be some forms of brackets you know jaw spreaders and kind of things like this so it means that you are in for something very long expensive and uh, you know actually very uncomfortable if you think about the children with the cerebral palsy well it's a lot a lot of them they are not even closely being the candidates for this type of the situation but you know when we start looking at the specifics of bruxism so here is a great description right so you see what it shows us it shows us three main types grinding lateral shift clenching that kind of closing right and tapping that will be the more faster thing so actually up to 20 percent of the children develop this condition before the age of 11. that's quite a lot but you see once again when we look at this we say hey what would be the common thing about it it's not the direction of how they do it you know that very much looks like a tensional discharge so that's the you know when you have a closed kinematic chain you know closed chain which doesn't have the discharge 
So these elements, they look like the ways to do this discharge. So tapping really does the open chain whilst grinding and clenching. That's the type of the situation when a person brings their muscle contraction to the maximum kind of super contraction, hoping that that will bring a certain, you know, exhaustion of the muscle and then it will go into the overshot of the uh, muscle tone uh, drop. So that's kind of the way at which this mechanism uh, would be working. Again, I don't see anything very particularly tricky about it. So it sounds, you know, like quite an obvious thing in terms of at least the understanding, right? So you see, we can discuss the solutions, which exact mechanical terms, how we're going to do it, what would be the leading kind of causative uh, scenarios and in which sequence to approach it. But to understand that Bruxism is just a local specific particular case of this kind of time dependent curves for charge and discharge. So when the, when the global tone doesn't set into its normal level when it's elevated, right? And when the muscle kind of specific charge and discharge doesn't have the complete uh, kind of return to the initial starting point, well, you've got a problem, right? You know, like it doesn't take much to understand. You see, for example, if I take one shallow breath and then the second shallow breath and the third one, you know, and I never fully complete, then, you know, my breath number five, who has to be deep, right? So you see, I have to exhale deeply to get the big inhale and kind of reset my system. So, but if I'm stressed, right? So you see, if I'm anxious, stressed, scared, whatever, doing so is going to be difficult right so you see i'll try to breathe this 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 but just the system just doesn't allow me this right so you see why because the tone is up and because the tone is up there is not that cycle of charge and kind of complete discharge is not working so that's exactly the same thing right which relates to the, uh, you know, which kind of comes to the job performance as well. So that's, as I said, you know, I was, I, I'm, I'm still kind of perplexed as I'm looking at this because we, you know, like the thing itself looks obvious, right? You know, how to say it? If we look at it and say, hmm, how come that the current, let's say, physical therapy in general, that they don't have a good version of reasonable explanation for something as kind of straightforward as bruxism, that's a very worrying symptom, which kind of brings the question, okay, guys, but what if you can't even come up with the understanding that requires just basic time dependent curves which are like everywhere and which are even really easily understood in the kind of common language right incomplete discharge or like common or simple uh, anatomical references like i just did with breathing so my question is like how come so that's really was a very surprising thing for me to find to find it out here. So let's move on. Так, Brooksism, Brooksism. Let's see what I have here. I have here. Yes. So that's another thing to share here, right? So you see, this is uh, also common knowledge. So this is I found it in SlideShare because a lot of you know, students, especially from India and Arab countries, they do this kind of reviews. I guess that's the type of the 
you know, of the, of the curricula that they get, that they have to deliver the reviews for their studies of the current sort of state of the art. And once they've done it for school, they just bring it to SlideShare and so on. So you can actually see it as a kind of condensed internet search, but at the same time where the person has a certain responsibility, right? So you see they have to do it well enough and not to mess it up so that they get a good grade. So that's why this is a very easy uh, avenue for looking at what kind of the current state of the art and the current level of knowledge uh, is at a particular area. So, bruxism, medical term for grinding, national uh, clenching, we got this, sleep, why it should be treated, in most cases mild and might not require treatment, frequent and violent, can lead to jaw disorders, headaches, damaged teeth, and other problems. And causes, right? Doctors don't completely understand the causes of bruxism when we read this. So don't completely understand means that they don't understand at all, right? So in some, in some adults, it's the abnormal alignment of upper and lower teeth, the malocclusion may contribute to the problem, we already addressed it, but more often psychological factors cause bruxism. So we already discussed this, right? Anxiety, stress, you know, suppressed anger or frustration, aggressive, competitive, or hyperactive personality type, right? So which kind of moves this particular local and specific problem into the domain of psychology, psychiatry, and everything else, or like personal development, which is, of course, a completely different domain. Finally, here we find some sort of the mechanical explanation, right? In children, bruxism may be related to growth and development. Some researchers think that children brux because their top and bottom teeth don't fit together comfortably. So, again, that's a decent take, very mechanical, right? But it still doesn't give us much of the clues of what is the participation of everything else, right? So we get locked into this explanation. And then again, tension, anger, allergy, or as a response to pain from an earache or teasing. So, and again, the question is, okay, even if it's an ear ache or teething, why do they do this, right? The same thing. If it's an ear ache and you're moving your jaw and so on, right? So you're trying to do some kind of discharge and relief. Very mechanical act that you're looking for. So this one goes up to 30 the number from 20 and we get this most children outgrow bruxism before they get their adult teeth now and this is again the scenario the situation where we're facing this symptomatic reasoning so you know you've done nothing so the imbalance was present there during the childhood during the growth periods and so on and then somehow magically the thing disappeared. Well, that sounds suspicious, right? So it's much rather than it's not disappeared, it just kind of got swept under the rug. So where the problems, you know, they just kind of been uh, packed, hidden, or just put into this kind of temporary uh, landfill site, right, within fascia, and which is definitely going to kick back one way or another, you know, at some point later in life. Once again, the statement is this, in many cases, no treatment is necessary, Many kids outgrow without special treatment, and many adults, they don't brux badly enough to require therapy. 
well, of course, if the therapy is a, some kind of forceful repositioning of a jaw, you know, of the jaws which will take, you know, let's say brackets for two years and uh, all kind of, you know, extensors and everything else and will cost, I don't know how much, right? So then, of course, this kind of heavy intervention is, a, is an expensive in terms of time, uh, effort, and, you know, discomfort budget, not to mention the financial aspect. So that's what we see here, right? So you see then you have the dental approaches. So the mouth guard to prevent damage from your teeth. So that's, again, a kind of splint of sorts. So just to try to save the teeth, which is a good idea. You know, at least you don't, uh, you try to minimize the collateral damage, but uh, nonetheless, it doesn't look like a solution to the actual thing. Well, dentists may also correct misaligned teeth, but on the other hand, right? So you see now, this is the conversation about the standard jaws, right? Standard mouths, if we can put it this way, right? So, but when we move to the domain of cerebral palsy, well, the reality is their dental manifestation, right? And their jaw appearances are anything but the regular and the dental methods, they don't actually work, right? So, in that respect, we kind of back to square one in that respect. And behavior therapy. Practicing proper mouth and jaw position. Concentrate on resting your tongue upward with your teeth apart and your lips closed. This is, well, again, the belief that some conscious exercises can deal with the unconscious, uh, you know, type of the mechanical activities is uh, perplexing. So, and here, the, the biofeedback as the therapy. So that's, but biofeedback here in respect to the stress itself. So beeping sound. So basically trying to retrain you and change your behavior and medications. Well, and here at least we have the statement, doc medications aren't very effective for the treatment of bruxism. And doctor may suggest taking a muscle relaxants before bedtime. So, again, we get back to the same story. We have 630 muscles embedded into the sea of muscle tone with the waves of ups and, you know, of, of elevation and uh, descent. But, you know, whether it's anti-stress medications, whether it's max muscle relaxants or whatever, all of those, they are not area specific. They're not muscle specific. They're not tone specific. So that's kind of, it's a very, very general thing without uh, getting any specific calibration for the problem. So this is where we are. And of course, here at the end, now the familiar thing, if you can't handle the muscle, then do then try to paralyze it. So do the botox, right? So you see that's and again the conversation here moves into the usual thing, so that these injections may help. And we of course ask this big question: if you require such an extreme measure as injecting poison and paralyzing you know, a good number of the muscle fibers as your only uh, therapy option. So that just highlights the fact that you cannot do much about the kind of predictable positive change of the muscle tone, the underlying fascia tone, and the distributions of the time dependent variables of sort of loading and unloading, charge and discharge. Self-care, limit alcohol, tobacco, and caffeine. So that's the advice probably for the parents, right? So you see reduce stress, 
keep in your life stresses to a minimum and consult your sleep partner. So try to be aware of, so that they don't, they tell you. Okay, so basically that's it. Wish you a stress-free life. So again, everybody gives us the same thing, right? So you see like how many explanations, how many of the kind of this therapy guidelines wishing you a stress-free life. So that's a very nice wish, very positive, very uh, kind of wishful, you know, wish, but we should be looking for something more practical than that. So, and that's why the next thing is going to bring us into the next thing. Okay, but you see here, the wiki how gives us at least something practicing stress management at home using professional jaw uh, professional stress therapy consider meditating avoid caffeine before bed try hypnosis doing jaw relaxation exercises okay so finally somewhere far at the end we get some people trying to do something practical. But as you can see from this picture, this is more just kind of common sense, right? So massage your jaw muscles. Focus on releasing tension in your masseter muscle, which is a primary chewing muscle. It covers the sides of your jaw just behind your cheeks. To massage it, place your hands on the notches just below the cheekbones. Your fingers should be able about one inch in front of one inch in front of your ears. Press this notch firmly and rub it. This is a sturdy spot on your face, so don't be afraid to apply firm pressure inward and out. Look, this is already something, right? We might discuss the techniques, we might discuss it, but at least it's finally bringing us into something practical. But of course. Also, the reverse is true. If this type of the simple hands-on self-exercise work, probably we wouldn't have it in the list of uh, the problems which could not be cured, right? So that's the exercise. Adjust your tongue to relax your jaw. Do the fake drunk exercise exercise at least once once a day slurring your speech as though you were sleepy or drunk begin by saying the sentence i'm so relaxed i can hardly talk <laughs> okay tech and do the long surprise exercise at least once a day mouth guards mouth so at least we found something something which is finally taking it on there practical side but as you can see this practical side is outside of the mexico medical textbooks and which probably means that it hasn't had that much of success so with this being understood let's move on and get to the next level of trying to figure out what are the true causes so and now we move to the next thing which is the perspective 